there, co-founder, Path Trading Partners, along with Bob Iacchino. Again, thanks for the comments. So the numbers could come out tomorrow or Saturday, but we'll find out. Uh, with the delivery numbers, is still with the uh, 800 weekly option volume, nearly 135K. Going off today, open interest, not really, still sitting at 22,000. Pretty decent selling pressure uh, coming from the overall market. The market had a lot of downward pressure on it and uh, diminishing volume. There seemed to be a fair amount of selling pressure every time it tried to get a rally on today and another inside day. So even we have a double-double inside day. Why is it a double-double inside day? Because today is an inside day from yesterday. Yesterday is the inside day from before. So I'm calling it a double-double uh, inside day. So again, it's a consolidation pattern. I got asked also, and I think I saw a comment, uh, triangle pattern. Yeah, and I've talked about these before and why they are so tough. Because... We let's say it breaks, but let's just say whether you use that point or this point, whatever you use, uh, the point to the upside. Let's say it breaks up above here. There's been all this selling pressure up here. So my key level is still, I'd be watching, let me go back to the daily, I'd first be watching again this about 790 level on at least getting a, a, a solid hourly close above there to watch for the breakout. And that sort of makes the triangle pattern, because you, you break above it. it. If your intraday trader gives you, you know, you might want to jump on it with a slight edge to the upside to the downside. And these are nearly, look, I mean, you, so you break down below this bar's low, let's say uh, 775. And then you have key support at 773. You have some more support at about 770. And then you have major support at 760, bottom of the rotation zone. And this low, let me, I'm sorry for jumping back and forth, but that's the low from the two days ago, which is the very key level because you have this double double inside bar. So historically, with technical analysis, this the high and the low that created both these inside bars are the most key high and low. So those are the ones that are going to get keyed off of the most. We've already identified the 766.37 as, you know, the anchor point for our harmonics lower. But back to that four hour, you know, right down there is the bottom of the rotation zone. So this could easily break the triangle to the downside, catch on the rotation zone, and rotate back up. And even if it did that, it would still just be, again, I'm going to jump back and forth in this bigger horizontal sort of consolidation pattern. Now, let's discuss the triangle. When it's at the end of a move like this, uh, it still favors an upside breakout with the rotation zone due to a lot of horizontal, a uh, lot of historical testing, not horizontal testing. It still sl slightly favors by like one point something percentage points of a resolution to the upside. But is that something you can go? I mean, we're, you're talking like 51.5 versus 48%. I mean, is that something you're going to bank on? That's why I'm just, you know, we'll leave it on the chart. We'll see, you know, how it resolves. The key, again, I'm still watching the 790s. We break 790s. I'm targeting 800s, and if we go through that, 810s. To the downside, my key right now, if we start breaking down, my key support's coming in at 766. We break down there, the same levels as yesterday. And my major support level's coming in about 758 to 760 because, again, we have this prior... So resistance becoming support we break down below that then we're just gonna have to look now we might not get anything depends again when these numbers come out I imagine if they're not so good they'll either come out Friday after the close or you know Saturday sometime when it's not trading to try to minimize the impact so we'll just see if that's where I think it's all gonna resolve this little move uh, if we don't have anything coming out tomorrow. We still have this 
decent option volume. We've had some decent moves on Friday. That's the first thing I'm going to be watching tomorrow with the slight odds to the upside, but ever so slight. It's just watching this thing intraday and going with the price action. It could not get any traction today. Let's go that down to this five minute. Again, we had the 786 level up here. Your little, little lower move on the open. Then I thought this. Hey, maybe you're going to get some, some ignition move here. You had a lot of volume coming in, but then remember we talked about the overlap with the bars and everything. This, you know, I was watching. Okay, maybe it's going to take off. Nothing. Selling pressure. Selling pressure. Back up here to test that upper channel line. The only, you know. The only thing that there was, I just looked at this briefly intraday, just watching to see where these levels came out. But other than that, it could not, you know, it, it could not get a close above this uh, 788, uh, 788.16 area. I was watching it to get a close above there. Could not do anything above there. That was really it and stayed in this congestion pattern until the very end of the sell-off. And, you know, the S&P, what was that down today? S&P was down 1.18. So Tesla held 0.75 with that selling pressure. Uh, NASDAQ would, held up a bit better, but then the, the Dow down 1.54. There was... And we had end of quarter, so end of quarter rebalancing. That's why I'm really curious to see how it plays out tomorrow. That's why I'm just waiting for either to break out or break down. Breakdown is still against the rotation zone, so that's where I'm watching that bottom of the rotation zone. Now, if we can't get, if they can't, if we, if there can't get traction tomorrow and uh, there's additional selling pressure, then I'm really going to start looking for the uh, a probable retest of the lower end of the uh, channel. That will be the next thing. So that's, that's sort of my game plan, but we have to see where it will be positioned with those delivery numbers, the quarterly delivery numbers. We'll do an end of week wrap up tomorrow. Let's just preview it since it's the uh, end of the month. Let me just adjust this. We don't want that on the week. And we don't want this showing up on the week. There we go. Uh, just checking this out for going into. Uh, shoot. Going into tomorrow. Uh, we still got the rising rotation zone and the major supports down with the weekly rotation zone at the bottom of the channel and it's still being held up there but it's in very overbought condition so I don't have much else to say today we're just going to wrap this up well, the only bit of advice is I'd watch remember we couldn't get those ignition bars going we did have the options volume could not get the ignition bars going so make sure you watch them both in uh, sync with each other that you want the option volume coming in and you want to get some of those bars going that shows there's actual buying pressure in the underlying stock Again, it still seems like there's lots of selling, which not surprising coming at the end of the month and the end of the quarter with rebalancing, especially with a recently strong move. And as I said yesterday, I know ARC was still selling into this and uh, some other people were still supposedly selling into this move at to do end of quarter rebalancing. If you know any more, I know some people are in the financial realm who subscribe to this also. Please let me know in the comments. You'll help everybody out, and I'll talk to everyone later. Bye for now.